Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on the GLIAC champion Ferris State men's basketball squad. We'll check in with Bulldog hockey and women's basketball as well. All three teams returning home to the Ava Clavin Sports Complex with big games this week, though. We'll start first with Bulldog basketball. I'm joined by head coach Andy Bronkman. Coach, first of all, welcome, and congratulations on winning the GLIAC championship. Thanks, Robert. Certainly, I know uh, it says a lot for uh, the way your kids have been able to respond this year and obviously had a great team coming back, but uh, they've put it on the line each and every night and winning the conference championship in outright fashion. Yep, picked number one in the preseason and uh, went coast to coast with that target on our back, and that's a, that's a nice accomplishment. Um, in the years past, we've, you know, we've been a lower seed win the conference tournament or you know, just haven't had this big of a target on our back. So it was a new challenge, and the guys met the challenge, and I'm proud of them for that. But uh, still a lot of basketball to be played, and a lot of good basketball teams playing well, coming into their own, and uh, we'll, we'll have to try to beat those teams when, when we play them. I know uh, before we get into uh, the highlights of this past weekend, happy to be back at home. A tough four-game road swing, but uh, your team able to uh, find a way to get a win and a couple dramatic victories in there. Oh, real dramatic. Uh, games we'll, we'll never forget, and, you know, that road trip was – you know, of concern, major concern, right when the schedule came out. And, uh, you know, we had a lot to occupy our minds and our thoughts before then, but once it came, it was like, wow, what are we going to do here? Um, this is quite a challenge. So, you know, we, we started out, you know, at tipping, close at half, had a little momentum going in half. We were able to win that one in the second half. And then to Ashland, came out strong, but they came back, took a double digit lead. And we made that crazy shot. You know, Pete made that crazy shot to force overtime, won it in overtime. And then had a little momentum, but going to the UP where none of the North Division teams had, had won any games this year. And, uh, you know, we played pretty well against Tech, but they're just a hard team to defend. And they came up with the lead down the stretch. And, you know, we needed basically a miracle, and it happened. We got a rebound on a free throw, kicked it out for, for three, and <laughs> Noah made it at the buzzer, and then we won that game in overtime. And then we were just able to, um, you know, grind out a victory against Northern Michigan, who, who, you know, was was making shots against us. We weren't defending that well, and, and they were they were playing and scoring at a high rate, but, but so were we. It was kind of a battle of, um, you know, they went a little small, and we were going big, and we were both having a hard time guarding each other, but we, over the course of 40 minutes, pulled that one out. So that, that sums up the four games, and... Um, a lot of crazy things happened, especially those two shots were unbelievable. So we go to the highlights. We'll start first with uh, Thursday's game at Michigan Tech. And obviously uh, here in the first half got off to a, a good start and really shot the ball well from the outside in the first half. Shot it well. You know, they, they run a pack line, you know, sagging in defense. So they're going to dare you. And we made nine threes in the first half, which, you know, for us is, is great. You know, it's a little easier if you're open. Um, but it's a little bit of fool's gold. And uh, D'Lo caught fire like we've seen him do a couple times here early in his career. Made four of those threes pretty consecutive. You know, that's a spot up practice shot there, but, you know, that's not peach bread and butter. And, you know, there's a little bit of fool's goal for us to make those nine threes. Not that we don't have the talent to do it, but that's, that's not what we're trying to do is make nine threes in the first half. Obviously, uh, here Noah King with the big shot is uh, Battle Michigan Tech here in the first half. And obviously, uh, they've got a, a veteran team led by Kyle Monroe. Man, he's good, and uh, they have they have good players. And uh, if we weren't competing against each other all the time, I'd just like to show up to a couple of their practices to hear what to hear how they teach their motion offense, and uh, you know some of the vocab they use and some of the drills that they might use to wrap it out. But they're hard to guard, and uh, it starts out with the talent that they have, but it's also the teaching, and uh, I'd like to figure that out a little better. You're going down the stretch, a uh, tight ball game uh, was back and forth uh, here going down the stretch and obviously uh, your team with a, a veteran uh, group of guys that uh, certainly know how to find a way to make some plays down the stretch. That was a good over the top pass there and then that was a bad one. So we needed that one, um, but then we got this rebound to kick out for three, uh, force overtime when uh, we really had no prayer, but uh, it was answered and we went to overtime. But uh, yeah, we got we got a nice team that never says die, and that's good about our team. So, here, uh, kind of like the Ashland game, uh, once you got into overtime, uh, after getting the miracle, uh, you certainly uh, made some big plays to take uh, take advantage and take control in overtime. Made some big plays, big shots. You know, Kush and Noah sparked up, and um, you know, I thought we got a couple good stops down the stretch, but it's still hard to defend Kyle. And he saw that step back three made. Kush was all over him, perfect defense, and you just say, "Wow, great shot." 
Certainly uh, taking on Michigan Tech. Uh, then Saturday at Northern Michigan, always a challenge to win in the Upper Peninsula. And it's tough, and, and both those teams, I, th I think you'll, I mean, if we're moving ahead a little bit, um, next year they're going to be two of the top teams, if, if not both the favorites. You know, preseason polls, who knows, they might give it to us just based on what we did in the past. But as far as returning talent and returning points and players, those two teams, um, they're good right now, and then they're going to be really good next year uh, again. So tough place to play, and uh, we just went out, tried to defend a little bit better, and, and uh, you know, over the course of 40 minutes, we did. Here against uh, Northern Michigan, and obviously again in the first half here, uh, kind of a high-scoring game uh, here against the Wildcats. Yeah, two pretty good offenses, and uh, you know they score a lot of talent points. They're, they're so talented, we could be in the right position, and uh, you know they can make the shot. You know, right there, Deshaun slips a little bit, so Cole had to come up a little early, and they got the lob, and just you know Nava is a good blow-by player. You know, left-handed, tricky, good finisher on the uh, off the high glass there, but you know we were able to outscore them. Had a seven-point lead here at halftime, and. Obviously, they came in, played a little bit of a different lineup than maybe they did the first time around. Yeah, it appeared that was part of uh, Coach's plan to go a little small. And uh, I think it helped them on offense because it was hard for us to guard. But on defense, you know, we were able to take advantage also. And uh, Hank had a big game. I think that was part of the reason. The other part was, you know, Hank just played really well and he's talented. And, you know, he can make some of those shots just like Isaiah Johnson made there that, you know, are tough to defend. Put up 59 points uh, here in the second half, and again, D'Angelo Hughes uh, getting contributions from everybody, every guy that took the floor. That, that's the plan. That's the requirement. You know, when we stick you out there, we're asking you to perform your, your role and perform it well. And um, you know, there's a couple of nice plays by D'Lo hitting that three and and uh, assisting there to, to Hank. And you know, that's that's what we ask our guys to do. So it's your, your number's called, so you know, go out there and make the plays that you know you're comfortable to make. With the win here, uh, you improved to 27 and one on the year, and uh, obviously winning the outright championship here in the GLIAC and the number one seed for the conference tournament. But still, two big games to play uh, here in the regular season against Purdue Northwest and Grand Valley State this coming week. Yeah, I've said it a few times now, but you know we just the way we're programmed is just to make every game a big game. So the next one's a big game, one after that's big, and we have a lot of goals that are still ahead of us that are available for us to accomplish. And if they disappear and somebody else, you know, gets the tournament title or, you know, a number one seed in the region or, you know, our all-time win record is, you know, up for grabs this year. So we're, we're trying to do some things and uh, as long as they're available, we're going for them. Obviously, uh, Purdue Northwest, you played you close uh, in the first matchup. Grand Valley State, always a rivalry game. And along with that is Senior Day. Uh, just talk about the, the senior class, what they've meant. And obviously, uh, two of the guys that have played all four years, Noah King, Drew Cushingberry, go out as the, the winningest seniors uh, here in school history. Yeah, this, this class is, is an amazing class with accomplishments that are, you know, just a long list. And uh, I can't even begin to explain how, how good that they are. And I, I say it in a lot of our interviews, a lot of our, our shows here, but we have good players, great players. And, and that's, that's the truth. It, it starts there, it ends there. These guys have done things that no one else has done before and they've done it with, with class and character, and I uh, couldn't be prouder of, of the group. Well, Coach, congratulations again. Best of luck this week as you host Purdue Northwest Thursday, Grand Valley State on Saturday. Thank you. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this. The need for experienced educators is greater than ever. Ferris State University's School of Education is here to fulfill that need. At Ferris, students have the opportunity to choose from over 20 focuses while gaining first-hand field experience. Ferris State University, preparing the next generation of teachers who will shape the young minds of the future. For more information, go to ferris.edu slash education. Wow. You can get a 14-inch pizza with one topping for only $5.99 at Mancino's? Action! Hi, I'm Tony Presimoli from Tony's Basement Pizzeria, and our pizza is not that terrible. We may not have a 14-inch for $5.99, or great daily specials like a grinder combo for $6.99 with chips and a drink, or a small calzone combo. I also can't compete with the 10% discount that Ferris students have. You know what? 
I quit. If you want quality food, call Mancino's. At Ferris State University, be a provider. Be an investigator. What do you want to be? Be a Bulldog! Visit ferris.edu today. Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to talk Bulldog hockey and with us, Assistant Coach Mark Kaufman. Coach, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you, Rob. Glad to be here. I know, kind of like the basketball team after playing uh, four straight on the road for them. Uh, your team, uh, happy to be back at home coming into the, the final week of the regular season. Absolutely. Uh, not as successful as the basketball team. And congratulations on their uh, another championship in the regular season for them. Uh, yeah, we, we were at we Minnesota State this past weekend. and. Uh, uh, you know, we didn't win our games, obviously, but uh, the first night was a tough night, but the second night we really, you know, had a really strong effort. Uh, a little bit depleted right now. We, we, we've got a lot of kids that are missing uh, due to injury and sickness, like a lot of teams do this uh, time of year. And, uh, uh, but we were able to get uh, our 18 skaters and two goalies in, in involved over the weekend. And uh, like I said, we had a, you know, even though we didn't win on Saturday, we had a good finish against one of the strongest teams in the nation. So. Hopefully that can, uh, you know, prep as well for uh, our, our final home series against uh, Lake Superior State this weekend. Before we get to the highlights of this uh, past weekend, obviously uh, playing uh, for a playoff spot uh, here on the line this week against Lake Superior State and a big weekend coming up for the Bulldogs. Well, it certainly is. And uh, uh, at the end of the day here, we need a three-point regulation win to, to get in the playoffs. And uh, that's where our, our main focus is, you know, going into, into the weekend. So uh, uh, the first state make the team. We're right on the uh, right on the cusp there. Uh, Lake State's one point behind us. So uh, you know, we got to get in there. We got to dig in and uh, find a way to get it done. As we go to the past weekend's highlights, uh, we'll go first to the Friday night game against Minnesota State, and head off to yeah. a solid start here in the first period. A very even first period of action. Yeah, it w it really was. Uh, they got this face-off goal and beat us to the net on that point shot. But prior to that, we were really, really carrying the play, believe it or not, and we had some good mem uh, uh, tempo and pace. But it just, you know, just didn't seem to find its way consistently throughout the course of the game. This uh, game against Minnesota State, obviously, a uh, uh, Tough place to play uh, here on the road in Mankato, and two teams that know each other well have played a lot of times here in the past few years. They really have. The uh, uh, the fan base really gets uh, enthused when Fair State comes into into town. A few few years ago, we had some really heated uh, games against them, uh, playoff wise as well as regular season. So we're a good draw for those guys. And uh, uh, again, uh, uh, I think on Saturday night, the the fans certainly got their uh, money's worth in that regard down uh, one to nothing after one they get an early goal here in the second but uh, you were able to come back as Lucas Finner will get the first goal of that goal of the weekend. Yeah uh, one of our freshmen is just playing real well Lucas Finner as well as uh, Liam McDougall and uh, uh, Cole Norris just a real real bright spot moving forward into this weekend as well as next year and again they're just uh, they just around the puck around the knot at the net a lot and uh, when you when, when you're around that in the power play it's usually a uh, you know things good things happen. Two to one game at this point. Uh, what what took place uh, from this point forward uh, here? Uh, is Minnesota State obviously had a had a big second period. They did. Uh, they uh, they scored five uh, five goals, a um, couple power play goals, and uh, it, it, again uh, it was just they, we were on our heels and they they and we didn't have enough pushback in that uh, second period to really uh, uh, make things really count. But for the most part, uh, in the third period, we came out a lot stronger. Uh, we were on our toes. Uh, we forced to play a lot. Uh, they did get a did get a goal, but uh, uh, near the end of the period there. But uh, we certainly had our uh, uh, amount of opportunities to uh, you know score, but we just didn't. You're going into the third period in a game like that. Uh, how tough is it for for your uh, team and your guys to really uh, try to battle uh, to the finish? Well, you know, in between periods, we really discussed, hey, let's get out there 20 minutes. Uh, everyone's going to get five or six shifts. Let's dig in. Uh, let's see if we can win the period and, and, and just, you know, have some carryover from the, the next game. And even though we didn't win the period, we, we did a lot of good things in that third period that uh, uh, suggested, you know, we could get off in the right foot come uh, uh, Saturday evening. As we go to Saturday night's highlights, obviously uh, you mentioned your team uh, able to bounce back and really put together a nice performance on Saturday night. Yeah, uh, I, we got behind the eight ball, you know, two, two nothing out, out of the gate there. But, you know, they had four, I think they had 4,500 fans there, and uh, we found a way to battle back to make it 2-2, two, two, and it was really... Uh, uh, really a, a good character check on that. Um, but for the most part, uh, you know, those two goals, they were good goals by uh, uh, Minnesota State, but 
again, we started, we came back here, we started getting some chances, and uh, uh, you know, we made it 2-2 going into the third period. Obviously, uh, Justin Kappelmaster and Ned uh, here in game two, and uh, yeah. had a nice performance with you for, with 43 saves. Yeah, he did. Oh, here comes uh, Jacob Hepps, uh, Jacob Hepps uh, on the steal in the neutral zone. Great shot over the, uh, over the shoulder of the, uh, the goal pinner to tie it up 2-1. And uh, Jake kind of incurred an injury in the first period, but was able to fight through it, and uh, just a real, real solid play by him. Obviously, uh, you'll get the second goal uh, coming up here shortly as uh, we see Kappelmaster and again uh, had a nice uh, performance in net for you. Well, yeah, he, he's played there before and uh, his first collegiate win was in Mankato, at Minnesota State a couple of years ago. So uh, uh, he, he, he's very familiar with it. He always seems to stand tall in net uh, against his club and uh, they had a 5-1-3 uh, for a minute and a half against us and he was, uh, he was sparkling. Going into the third period, tied at two, and uh, remained that way until uh, you know the final three minutes or so of the game. Yeah, we had some great push uh, in the first 15 minutes, but uh, we, we, we kind of had a bit of a break down here at the end. And uh, uh, but Justin kept us in there as best we could, uh, but we just uh, we couldn't outscore our mistakes, so to speak. But uh, um, it was you know it was a good performance to gauge ourselves moving forward to, into Lake Superior this weekend. Obviously, uh, playing a Minnesota State team that's having a, a great season. Yeah, they're a championship caliber club all the way. I mean, they got a good combination of will as well as skill, and uh, uh, they're, they're hitting on all, all cylinders. Uh, we, we, we felt, though, it, you know, our goaltending could be maybe a little bit better than their, their goaltending, but uh, their goaltending you know, stood tall. But when we got uh, around him and got some good shots, you know, he, 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 he struggled a bit. But uh, uh, who knows? You know, if we can get through this weekend, we might be going back to Minnesota State uh, for the first-round playoff matchup. Obviously, this weekend taking on Lake Superior. What will be some uh, keys for your team uh, here coming into this weekend with a with a playoff spot on the line? We got to start the game on time, and we usually when we score the first goal, um, that really sets the tone for the uh, the rest of the game, or at least the first period. But uh, if we can push the uh, push the pace and really you know have some play with some tempo and, and, and speed, and just make sure our uh, uh, you know our grit fact, factors in place as well. But we've got to get in there uh, the first five six minutes of that game, get that first goal, and. Um, usually that, that bodes well with us during the course of the season, uh, during the course of the game. Finally here Saturday night, uh, regular season finale, senior night as well, and uh, always a great opportunity to honor a senior class. Yeah, we got six of them. We got the Durani brothers, Drew and Tyler, uh, Mitch Maloney, Drew Mayer, uh, Tyler Andrew, and uh, Zach Zayner. And uh, uh, when they were sophomores, they were part of the uh, the team that went to the. Um, uh, the, the final eight in, 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 in Minneapolis. We beat St. Cloud that year. They were the number one team before we advanced to the uh, second round. But you know they were all integral part of that of that team in terms of their contributions. So uh, a real, real solid class. It's going out the door, but uh, a lot to hang the hat on in a real positive way. Well, Coach, best of luck this weekend to the Bulldogs as you return home to the Ava Glavin Ice Arena. Thank you, Rob. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this. Ferris State University, be a designer. Be an informer. Be a maker. Be a bulldog. Visit ferris.edu today. Cuts back to the right side, breaks a tackle, touchdown! Mack and shoots and scores! Corey Mack and off the rebound! On to Williams, back to Cushingberry, three-pointer up and good! Juliet tournament champion. Ferris State with a huge win! Come rise with us. For more information, visit FerrisStateBulldogs.com. At Ferris State University, we're more than our student-to-faculty ratio. More than our variety of programs, our internship rate, or our number of student organizations. Here, you're never just a number. You can be yourself and be focused on your goals. Be inspired every day and be ready for tomorrow. Be a Bulldog. Go to ferris.edu.
Welcome back to Ferris Sports Update. Time to check in with Bulldog Women's Basketball. We're joined today by student assistant coach and former player Hannah Evo. And uh, Hannah, first of all, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Obviously a little bit of a different role for you this year uh, as, a, as a player. Uh, had your career kind of cut short by injuries, but uh, as a student assistant coach this year, what's it been like being a part of the coaching staff and experiencing the other side of it? Yeah, you know, it's it's definitely been a big change, but it's been a really good change. After I found out that I wasn't physically able to play, I knew I still wanted to be a part of the program in some way, and I think this is the most valuable position that I could have had on this team. Obviously a lot on the line uh, coming into the final week of the regular season for the Bulldogs. What's it been like to see the, the program grow and really uh, really have some success uh, here this season? Yeah, it's been it's been really great to see the changes that have been made over the past few years and how our team has progressed. Um, coming in, we were very young and now we're getting to the point where we have some veterans that have been doing some really good things for us and the trend that we're seeing has just been a really good trend. This past weekend, as we go to the highlights, we'll start first with uh, Thursday night, a difficult road trip uh, to the Upper Peninsula and uh, part of a busy uh, four-game stretch with a lot of time on the road the past couple weeks. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we've been traveling a lot, and um, this past weekend we were disappointed with the outcome, of course, you know, wanting to win them all. And um, But what we can say is that it's really going to motivate us coming into this next weekend. Obviously, uh, Michigan Tech uh, ranked 17th in the country, got off to a great start, had a big first half uh, here on the Bulldogs before uh, Ferris State really uh, rallied back a little bit in the second half. Yeah, you know, I think that we wanted to control the pace a little better in that game, and I don't think that we played at the pace that we usually like to play at. And, um, but then we came back the next game and um, definitely made a change there. Obviously, the first time uh, you guys took on Michigan Tech, it was a tight ball game at home at Wink Arena, but playing on the road in the UP, a little different challenge uh, than, than maybe playing them at home. Yeah, it's different um, when you're traveling, especially up there. It's a long trip up there. and. You know, we, um, we're looking forward to playing them. It was a really competitive game the last time, and we just, they shot, Tech shot the, team, shot the ball very well, and they're a really solid team, and we just didn't come to play as um, we had hoped that game. When you're uh, trailing like that at halftime, uh, what are the keys going into the second half and, and trying to make a comeback? You know, when, um, when you're down by that much at half, it's um, kind of about really who's going to give that effort, who's really going to dig in. This We knew we had to um, come back. In fact, we did actually win just second half alone. We did come back and um, gave it our all that second half. So being able to make those adjustments are important. Rachel McInerney with the block right there. Uh, obviously having a big senior season. Uh, what's it been like to have her on the floor each and every night? Yeah, she's been awesome. And she's just seeing her grow over the past couple years. Her and I came in the same year. And um, being able to see how much she's improved and how much she impacts our team as a whole has been awesome. I think she played really well against Michigan Tech defending their post. and. Um, she, either way, on offensive, offensively and defensively, she's been great for us. Obviously, uh, here at Michigan Tech uh, found a way to make some big shots going down the stretch after uh, Bulldogs have pulled within 14 on a couple of occasions. Yeah, um, they're a good shooting team, Michigan Tech is, and I think that's something that um, moving forward, and I, we understand that, and we know that we need to make some adjustments in regards to defending them. After the Michigan Tech game, you come back on Saturday, uh, taking on Northern Michigan at the Barry Event Center, and a little different uh, environment uh, for basketball than maybe uh, was at Michigan Tech. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was definitely for sure. And um, I think we wanted to come out um, with a really solid pace after having not the pace we wanted in the Tech game. And in Northern, I think we did come out and we worked really hard and we played at that pace and that level that we wanted to pit, play at. Two teams right here uh, had a tight game uh, in Big Rapids the first time around. And here on the road, two teams with a, a lot to play for uh, here late in the conference season. Yeah, it was competitive. We knew going into it that they were going to come in fighting, and we knew we had to do the same. Um, the outcome didn't go our way, but I, I do think we did leave it all on the court. Obviously, uh, here in the first half, uh, really for the first three quarters, really a back-and-forth game. Uh, neither team really able to take control and, uh, and hold on to the lead. Yeah, I know. You, you know, I think that um, we missed some shots that we wish we would have made, and I think if those shots fell in, then the game would have come out our way. Obviously, uh, I talked with Coach Faustin after the game, and. Uh, Bulldogs did a lot of things well uh, here in this game. Uh, free mm -hmm. throw shooting really uh, kind of proved to be the difference going down the stretch. Yeah, you know, we did a lot of good things. So as much as the outcome wasn't what we wanted, I think that, um, yes, free throws are something that, you know, we'll make the next time. And those shots that we think we'll make, we'll make the next time. But all those things that we can control, I think we tried to control as much as possible that game. How different is it uh, shooting in this type of an environment with a lot of space, obviously behind the backboards uh, here in more of an arena setting? Yeah, it, it's definitely different. It makes a difference. But if you're focused and look at it like any other game, then it should be pretty pretty similar. Uh, early in the fourth quarter here, uh, build a four-point lead after a big steal from Shania Huggins. But Northern Michigan, uh, as, the, as they 
have done in the past. I've found a way really to come back and, and make some big shots going down the stretch. Yeah, um, they're a tough team. They're big, strong, and um, they were able to make those shots, and we weren't at the end of the game. So I think that's kind of what it came down to. 69-60, the final score here is uh, Bulldogs uh, come out on the short end, but uh, still very much uh, alive for a GLIAC tournament spot, uh, sitting yep. seventh uh, here and in the top eight will qualify uh, here at the end of the year. Yeah, we're really looking forward to next weekend. I think we learned a lot from this past weekend against Tech and Northern, and we're going to use what we learned and take it into the following weekend for Purdue Northwest and Grand, Val Grand Valley. Purdue Northwest uh, comes in, and obviously uh, you were able to beat Purdue Northwest. Uh, that'll be the first matchup on Thursday night, Grand Valley on Saturday. Uh, talk about these two opponents and, and the challenges maybe both of them bring. Yeah, I mean, they're both very different teams. And Purdue Northwest, they come out fighting. And we know that they're not going to let down one second. So we know that we can't do that either. Going into Grand Valley, they're a very good shooting team. So it's going to be really important for us to find those shooters and close them down. Obviously, on Saturday, senior day uh, for the Bulldogs, and Rachel McInerney, Leah Humes, the two seniors on the floor, along with yourself. Uh, just talk about what, uh, what senior day is going to mean, uh, being a part of that. Yeah, I mean, we're looking forward to it and not looking forward to it at the same time because it's exciting to be honored as a senior, but it's bittersweet. It's, it's been one heck of a ride, and us seniors, we, we've really learned so much over the past couple of years, and just to see the movement of our program and how we've been able to affect that has been awesome. And we're really looking forward to see it after we go and see the changes that are continued to make. Obviously, the GLIAC tournament coming up next week and uh, some work to do to get in the conference tournament. But what would that mean, uh, being a part of the, the program here and the team, uh, first team to make the conference tournament since 2013? Yeah, it would mean a lot. I, this would be the first time that me as a senior and Rachel and Leah would have made the tournament. So um, for us, it really means a lot to get there. Talk about your plans uh, after graduation, what you hope to do uh, going down the road. Yeah, so I'm going to be working for Stryker in Kalamazoo um, as a marketing associate, uh, looking forward to being in medical device sales. So. Well, best of luck uh, as, you, as you move forward, and uh, best of luck to the Bulldogs this weekend uh, as Ferris State hosts Purdue Northwest and Grand Valley State. Thank you very much. That's going to do it for Ferris Sports Update. Reminder, you can follow all the action online at ferrisstatebulldogs.com. Have a great week.